<laughs> so good morning everybody we are live for turning towards life and uh, christopher has picked his moment to come in and join us good morning christopher good morning Lucy. fantastic and beautiful timing here he is again <laughs> Christopher is lying. Christopher in a massive Afro wig. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you in a minute, my dog. <laughs> and we are live as well. <laughs> for um, Turning Towards Life. It's Sunday morning in London, and uh, we are delighted, all three of us, to be here this morning to uh, <laughs> talk with one another and to talk with you. And... Um, to bring you a, a fantastic source that Lizzie has chosen, which seems to me very um, appropriate for this moment and for our times. And um, as always, this is uh, part of our commitment to the world that comes from being involved in third space coaching. And we're really thrilled to be here. We're very thrilled to be here. And um, yeah, we may have some more appearances from Christopher. I have my sister and her children staying with me this evening. Well, yesterday evening and today. And uh, so who knows who's going to come through the door. I'm very, very happy to be here, though, and to have this, uh, for me, like a super lovely domestic time where we're making decorations and doing things punctuated by this really lovely thing that we do together. I'm really happy to be here. And I love the fact that it's kind of in amongst normal worldness as well. That's one of the things I appreciate about us doing it this way is that we're not um, in a workshop or all prepared or something we just is part of our lives and I really love that mm. so I, I am going to read this wonderful source which got sent to me by one of my very lovely clients this week and I did have a not something different to post actually which maybe I'll post in a couple of weeks time instead but when I got this I just felt like it really met us where we are Justin and lots of inquiries about the world and the, the things we've been encountering. So here we go. This is a lovely poem by Joanna Macy. Active hope is not wishful thinking. Active hope is not waiting to be rescued by some saviour. Active hope is waking up to the beauty of life on whose behalf we can act. We belong to this world. The web of life is calling us forth at this time. We've come a long way and are here to play our part. With active hope, we realise that there are adventures in store, strengths to discover and comrades to link arms with. And others, a readiness to discover the reasons for hope and the occasions for love, a readiness to discover the size and strength of our hearts, our quickness of mind, our steadiness of purpose, our own authority, our love for life, the liveliness of our curiosity, the unsuspected deep well of patience and diligence, the keenness of our senses and our capacity to lead. None of these can be discovered in an armchair or without risk. <clears throat> Before I read this back, Lizzie, I have to tell you that this is um, also from a book that you bought me a couple of years ago. At Christmas time, right in the darkest, uh, time of the year. So I, I love this and I so appreciate and I'll probably say more about this as we go, uh, need uh, words like these. So Active Hope by Joanna Macy. Uh, active Hope, actually I'm going to read this in a different way. Active Hope is not wishful thinking. Active hope is not waiting to be rescued by some saviour. Active hope is waking up to the beauty of life on whose behalf we can act. We belong to this world. The web of life is calling us forth at this time. We've come a long way and are here to play our part. With active hope, we realize that there are adventures in store, strengths to discover, and comrades to link arms with. Active hope is a readiness to discover the strengths in ourselves and in others, 
a readiness to discover the reasons for hope and the occasions for love. A readiness to discover the size and strength of our hearts, our quickness of mind, our steadiness of purpose, our own authority, our love for life, the liveliness of our curiosity, the unsuspected deep well of patience and diligence, the keenness of our senses and our capacity to lead. None of these can be discovered in an armchair or without risk. Mm. I'm going to say away it right away, Lizzie, that first of all, I'm so moved by this and inspired by this. And I think one of the reasons I'm moved by this, and I, I suspect this is true of many other people, is... Um, how quickly I forget everything that is in here mm. and find myself either settling into hopelessness, you know, in the midst of this, you know, anyone who pays attention to the news and that sometimes I'm, I think maybe I pay too much attention to the news, although it's also possible to pay too little attention, mm. you know, how much like right here and in the big world there is, that is in, is in trouble. And I know that I, um, fall very easily into hopelessness really really easy place for me to go um, and I also fall into another kind of hope which is not the active hope that she's talking about which is the I think it's the thing she says in the first line so the hope that somebody will rescue me I won't have to, I won't have to do anything well it's less than I won't have to do anything it's more like I can't do anything mm. and Somebody better come along and rescue us or rescue me. Otherwise, everything will be a disaster. And that kind of hope is really not really any hope at all. It's a kind of wishful thinking. And the line that gets me, that calls me back to life more powerfully than any other in this whole thing, and there are lots that really touches me, is uh, we belong to this world. Because mm. I... I I reckon that what happens for me most easily, and this may, I don't know if this, how many people this applies to, probably millions and billions, or if it's also just a, a sort of particularity of my own personality structure and my own preferences, is that I very, very easily feel like I don't belong to the world, like I'm on the outside of it. And that there's nothing I can do really to belong again and by virtue of being on the outside I'm on my own and then all of the all of the consequences of that so whenever somebody who I really trust and I, I definitely trust you and I trust Joanna Macy whose work is extraordinary when somebody who I really trust says no you belong it's a giant invitation to wake up to relationship and to contribution but also to my own capacities oh because if I belong there's stuff I can do here I'm not an alien here, which I think is often how I feel, particularly if things are hard. That's the quickest thing for me to feel is on the outside. So I'm feeling very, um, I'm feeling very welcomed and enlivened by this. And it's also got me wondering, thinking about how important it is that we tell one another that we belong. And we don't take it for granted that anybody else feels like they belong and that we need to keep on reminding one another of this in word and in touch and in action. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, I mean, part, part of why this, that, that I chose this is because it's really also extraordinary kind of arresting for me. And in a way, it represents all the ways that I care and all the ways that I'm not doing anything with it. And so, like you're saying, all the stuff that's going on in the world, and you just need to read one day of news a month, probably, and that's enough to last you a lifetime of questions about what to do with oneself in service of our world 
And what I'm realizing currently is that I have a lot of feelings and I'm mostly in my armchair. And when I'm not in my armchair, I find myself being very afraid. And so on Friday, I saw a guy doing not very good things on a scooter, criminal things, and I called the police. And he came back round again while I was on the phone to the police and stopped his bike and looked me in the face with a balaclava on and said, what are you doing? And I lied to him and said, I'm talking to my dad. And so he looked at me and as he drove off, I gave the police his number plate. And I was really, really frightened. I was really frightened. And in that moment, I thought, I'm not going to let this go because I'm scared. So I did it and I continued and, and God knows what happened. But I felt like there's so much stuff happening these days that's not okay. And that, you know, that guy, you know, he was a young, I think, you know, in his early 20s guy looked at me in the eyes and I thought, oh my gosh, in this moment you could do anything to me. And I was with my mom and we were on our own. And it's really brought me into contact with this. Time and therefore, what do, what do I do about that? And I know it's a very small example, but I, I guess I notice that when I come into contact with doing something about things and becoming, um, I don't know what you'd call, like active, about saying what I think about things, it's also really risky. And I remember walking around where I live and I was too afraid to put a remain sticker on me because I could feel what the Brexit people, um, the people who felt aligned with Brexit, what I felt afraid of what they would do to me. So I had this whole kind of us and they thing in my mind. I, you know, and I was, I'd heard some horrible things happening. And so I, I just noticed it brings up a lot of fear for me. And that's kind of why I want to bring this because I, I noticed that I find the, the getting out of my armchair and making, taking a risk for the things that I believe in feels really frightening sometimes. And, you know, I, I sit and I watch the, the things I believe in being plastered over the news, like the anti-fracking campa campaigners. And I, you know, obsessively read all about them. And I notice even now, this is a public broadcast. I feel really vulnerable saying, I support those men. And I read about their families and I read about their history and what they did and what kind of intelligence they are. And I, and I'm sure there are people who I know who might be watching this who think fracking is a good idea. And so there's a kind of way that I'm afraid to be in opposition because of the risk it means to relationship, the risk it might mean to my, my safety. To putting ourselves out there in favour of something also means we're putting ourselves out there in not favour of things too. And I find that really, really hard because one thing that is important to me is peace and harmony and people loving one another. And so this is the realm, like the doing something about what we see is not okay in our world is inevitable that, that we're going to be disagreeing with people is how I'm seeing it. And that means that I'm, I'm afraid. And so it feels like a really vulnerable conversation to be having. And and I, and I really want to have it and I want to feel braver and I want to feel in community around the things that I'm, that I feel are important. And I want to feel this active hope because I think I, I think I do, I am a hopeful human. Like I, I have a, a hopeful outlook as a general orientation. And I think I start very close to home and I hold close to home precious. And I realized that, that, that what this poem is calling for is a kind of hope that actually belongs in action and having comrades to link arms with and having faith in what happens when you do get into the thick of things 
and having faith that you'll still have your faith <laughs> you know that it will still be me there or us there people that I that I trust will be with me because in that moment of calling the police and doing something where I think that's really not okay what's going on here I felt really alone and afraid and I was with my mom so I felt very protective of her because she's probably less strong than me physically and all those kind of things and so it kind of reduces me quite quickly when I'm afraid and I and I yeah I have to kind of own up to that and to feel like I need some some strengthening and support and and more active hope in partnership and in relationship with other people hmm. I'm wondering what your finding that is making it possible to even consider stepping out, speaking up, just like you did on Friday, given everything that you say about what happens and the kind of commitment to peace that you are. Well, from what you say, clearly something's beginning to maybe it's not beginning, maybe it's been there for a long time, but something is being expressed here that is bringing you into a more powerful and risky kind of voice. Even what you're saying now, to me right now, so I'm <clears throat> curious about what you're finding is making that possible. Well, I think what I'm finding is the world is making its invitation to me by the encounters that I'm having. Like I, I also don't believe that I'm separate from any of this. And so when the world shows me things, people and experiences. So last weekend, I met two young people who've been part of the youth criminal justice system in the UK. And it was a really big encounter with something extraordinarily real and earthy, you know, very on the ground of life where I found myself having to reconcile the part of me that's afraid and the part of me that loves. And so it seems to me that I'm not sure I've, well, I don't know the difference between these things, but I haven't actively thought, right, I want to put myself in situations where I'm encountering people who are direct um, products of the way that we're all, our society is right now. I haven't sought that out, but they, in some way, maybe my consciousness is to do with that and is inviting that too. But they have been presented in my path. And it's almost like, you know, when they say like, let your, you know, when people say, let your life speak, I think it was what I was saying, as in listening to what's coming forth and following the threads. That feels like what's happening so what i was saying i carried on talking and just in case we were still alive but what i was saying was in letting my life speak and listening to that life speaking i'm recognizing that people are coming across my path that are this invitation basically so i don't know i was saying i didn't know the distinction between my consciousness and me creating these things and them just happening and i i feel like i'm not separate from it but i haven't con on my on a conscious level i haven't been seeking these things out but they're finding me and showing me that i'm yeah essentially connected to those parts of our world and that they are i belong to them as i belong to the kind of world that i'm familiar with i belong to all these other parts of our world and it's making me question how i am in those worlds and what I'm afraid of and what I feel called to and also testing me in terms of my faith, in terms of my faith in me and my faith in humans being good. And I feel like that's what's happening is that the world is coming towards me with these things and I'm going, well, how do I respond? Do I just put my fingers in my ears and close my eyes and sing myself a song, and make myself a cup of tea? Or do I go, oh, wow, this is what I'm being shown. What's, what's mine here? What do I do? What's, my, what's the, act, the appropriate action for me to take based on what I believe and who I am? And how can I reinstate my faith again and again in myself and in people 
that I can be me essentially and not be, not just get frightened and put my fingers in my ears which I haven't done but I can feel that there's mm. a temptation just to go I don't know what to do so I'm just going to turn away and it's another way that you know when we say turning towards life we're meaning turning towards whatever life is coming towards me right now right not being selective about the pieces of life that I want to turn towards but actually what, what is the piece of life that's here right now yeah that's a, such a powerful and important thing to say because it it can sound like turning towards life I and mean, for some of us some of the time it's turning towards the possibility of being loved or the possibility of gratitude or the possibility of beauty and all of that of course but also like you say the possibility of being afraid out of our wits and still speaking up mm. uh, encounter with um when Joanna Macy says there's no way of doing this without risk and with sitting in your armchair it, it actually involves being an encounter with risk which I think yeah. is the easiest thing to say and is can be the hardest thing to do it's one of the it's one of the biggest pieces of work that we have to do many of us is to find a way to know ourselves in this is what I think you call faith so beautifully and so often to know ourselves as held in something that doesn't, um, our definition of being held in something has, has to be unconditional. It can't be conditional on my own personal safety, for example. I have to know myself as held even when I'm unsafe. So even when you're calling the police and the, this sounds and feels so frightening to hear it, being confronted by the man who, on, who you're calling the police about, or speaking up about something that's going on in our political world, or acting on behalf of someone else, or acting on behalf of ourselves, any, you know, any of these things. And um, I was having a conversation with a, a very, very dear friend the other day, and um, we were talking about we were picking up a theme that you and I got into last, I think it was last week, Lizzie, when we were talking about the deal that we think we're in, in life, what kind of deal we've made with life. Mm -hmm. And There's I found no safe myself, passage. Yeah, right. And I found myself saying to her, actually it's to, uh, to Joy, who may be watching, I found myself talking with Joy about, um, uh, I don't think I made the deal to be unsafe in my life. I think I thought I was in the deal that everything would just be fine. You know, the world would get more peaceful and people would, the place would get more safe and everybody would be, everybody would have more of what they need and blah, 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 that that was the, at least in the family, in the part of the world that I grew up in, that felt like it was part of the deal at the time that I got born into the world. And it's so clearly not the deal. It never has been the deal for mm -hmm. most of the world. And I can feel the parts of me that, that want to, yell and scream they're very childlike parts and go no 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 i didn't i didn't ask for this no mm. i didn't ask for this and none of us really asked for what we got <laughs> can we um i love this thing that you said about finding the part of you that's afraid and the part and then other parts of you and can we have all of these parts mm. be in contact yeah. And I, in, in my mind is, you know, for in, in the broader picture in this country from where we're speaking, things aren't like this at the moment and may they never be like this, but I'm thinking about all the places in the world where there have been and are and will be terrible oppressions of people and how what keeps often keeps oppressions like this going is those of us who turn away who go it's not me mm -hmm. you know no one's coming for me it's not happening to me so i mm -hmm. can just hunker down and stay safe and and have the world be the way it is and the, the way that those oppressions always end mm -hmm. is because people take the risk with their own yeah. personal safety or that they might feel very afraid or that things in their life will change and stand up for us, you know, stand up and say things. And I, I think probably the, 
a curse for any of us who were blessed with not being born into a, a very conflictual situation, which, which gave us the gift of, you know, for any of us who have grown up with any kind of stable relationships with other people and where we haven't been at threat all the time, the gift that we've been given is that we're not super traumatized and immobilized by our lives. Like we all have trauma, but we've got some kind of capacity to be in the world. And the curse for anyone who's been born into that is we think, oh, well, the deal here is, is that I'll never be troubled. Yeah. So I, I'm not, you know, I'm speaking on my own behalf, not trying to yeah. speak on behalf of anyone else. And I, I can, um, having visited, um, I visited Berlin last summer and my two oldest boys have just been in Berlin this summer and, and looking at the history of what happened there in the Second World War. And it's so clear that, you know, there are times when we have to stand and we, and we don't always know what the time is. And there are moments when we have to stand, like when you're on a street corner on a Friday afternoon in London. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I'm circling back to this point that Joanna Macy makes that you keep on making about faith, which is, uh, she says, it's so brilliant what she says. She said, we've come a long way. Mm. Like we didn't just suddenly appear in the world. We've got, we all have a long heritage of being in the world, generations and generations, generations of billions of years. We belong. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can afford to take the risk of being afraid together, which is what it's always going to take. Yeah. I think, you know, I have to mention the word privilege in here for me. It's just really like what you just said about we have capacity. There's this whole thing about privilege that makes us blind. As in, because I haven't lived in a war zone for most of my life or, you know, I've had safety, I've had a roof over my head, I've had food. I can turn away because of my privilege or I can turn towards because of my privilege. So I can use my capacity because I'm okay. Or I can turn away and say, well, I'm just going to protect my own little corner of the world or something, my own religion or my own community or my own kind of slice of society. Or I can really kind of go vertical if you like and and see what I can do to go to be a person that can do their best to be with whatever arises and find my own I guess find my values and and do my inner work to know what is true for me and what's not true for me and when people tell me that they can see a prejudice that I have and or I can spot it for myself to be willing to say yeah I can see that I'm blind to that. Help me understand rather than just be kind of protective or defensive or, you know, it's a little bit like with the guy on the scooter. When I fantasize about the whole thing, I want to ask him what's going on. Like, how come you're doing that? What's your, you know, what's happening? But it's just so difficult because there's violence involved and there's threat and there's, so that's why it's so kind of confusing because it's like I, I want to I want there to be reconciliation like I it's not okay just to kind of call the police and then not in one way not know anything about whether that man got treated well or not and who knows what prejudices belong in the police and it just so then I so then I kind of go oh my god I really don't know what to do I better get back in my armchair again so it's like I kind of peeked out and then I kind of, and, and I can notice that I feel kind of ashamed of the kind of privilege that I am as well. You know, I was on the way to the cinema to see a nice film. That, that guy wasn't on the way to see a nice film in the cinema. He was on the way to do probably things that really are not aligned with him feeling like a good person in his, in his life. And, yeah, so it's kind of, it's confronting and I do feel helpless and powerless in so many ways. And so being invited into feeling this active hope and 
considering that even though I feel hopeless and I feel powerless, that's not the end of the story, that there are more parts of me available here that Joanna Macy's validating in me that I can feel enhopened by this, this poem goes to me, okay, all of that and all is not lost and it's not a hopeless situation here. I, I, I have capacities that I might forget when I'm frightened, but it doesn't mean they're not here, it just means I've forgotten them. And I think that goes for all of us. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. So, so this, this comes back to um, a definition of hope that maybe we'll circle around to at some point that I know about through Rebecca Solnit's work, but comes from somewhere else, which is that the hope that we need is, is hope in our capacity to respond, to turn towards things. It's not, it's not the hope that everything will be okay or that we'll be rescued. And, and this is why I want to bring back in something also that you've been such an advocate for and that you, you have said here many times is, it's why we need one another. Because when we are in the kind of relationship with others that where everybody gets reminded of capacities we didn't even know that we had or we didn't know to trust, we don't have to feel safe anymore. It's not, it's not about feeling safe, it's about knowing that we can move, that we can create, that we can speak, that we can stand, that we can, you know, all of that. So it's hope in, it's hope in our capacity, not hope in how things turn out, even though we might have great wishes for how things will turn out, deep commitments to how things will turn out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right, Justin. I think for me, it's also about humbly accepting the, the actions that I can take and actually taking them and being discerning about that. So it means that I can have faith and move towards people that I feel there's a fear, but that it's, that it's okay, that it's surmountable. I can, I can be in it. And, it and, and I feel like I want to be able to take those small steps towards just the one that's in front of me right now so that I'm not wholly disabled by the overwhelm of all the issues I can see, but that I can take the ones I can take. And so this is also an invitation, I think, to humility and being okay with what I can do right now mm. Mm. so I'm noticing we're kind of I think we were a little bit late but I think it's probably the time for us to to end our call so I want to just thank everybody for being in this kind of tenderness with us and I think this project is capable of going into many many realms and I feel really excited about that and also intrepid and really grateful that there are people who whose sources we benefit from mm. and that bring this this wonderful conversation so thank you so much for being with us thank you for catching up if you're catching up later and um happy sunday to everybody yes thank you everyone we'll see you next week see you next week bye <laughs>